Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today, I'm going to be teaching you all how to start a factions server. We're going to be going over every single step of like getting the factions plugins together. Now we're not going to be going in depth as to like configuring all of these plugins because there's a lot of them here. I mean if you look in the description down below, even up here, and I do notice we need to refresh on some of these spigot pages, but that's not here nor there. Anyway, in the description down below, you'll find all the plugins we're covering here, and they all, you know, could have some sort of configuration with them and all that. We do have dedicated tutorials for some of them, but overall, we're going to show you the basis of getting a faction server. We're also assuming that you already have your server set up in general, right? You already have a paper server up and running. In our case, this is a paper 1.16.5 server here. You may have it on a server host, and that's perfectly fine, and what we would actually recommend as well. You honestly should run your faction server on a server host and not on, like, your own computer like this, unless you're you're just doing testing. But nevertheless, if you do want to host your server on an awesome server host, you can check out Apex Minecraft hosting to do that at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. There you will be able to start your very own faction server, and they actually already have a pre-built faction setup. If you don't want to go through all this, you know, crazy stuff of downloading all these plugins and installing them, guess what? Apex has a faction server up and ready to go for you that you and your friends could just have tons of fun with. Sure, if you're starting like a big server and you want to actually, you know, set up Bycraft and do all that, probably make your own server to make it more custom, but Apex still gives you a template to start with that, so you can check check out Apex, the first link down below the breakdown.xyz to start your very own faction server with just one click, or start your very own faction server that you want to build from the ground up. We actually love and trust Apex so much, we have our own server, played our breakdowncraft.com on them, so nevertheless, again, that's the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your faction server set up. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of what all of these plugins do as I go through and kind of download them, right? So, first and foremost, we have a Saber Factions here. This is your main Main factions plugin. Now, there is another factions plugin called Factions UUID that you may have heard of in the past. The problem is right now it's unable to be downloaded from Spigot's page. Um, I would have, you know, covered that a little more in depth, but Saber is updated to 1.16 and to 1.8, so it's both version compatible, which is very, very good because some people like to play factions on 1.8 and some people like to play it on 1.16, and guess what? You have it on both of those versions there. If you want to host a 1.8 faction server, you can, or a 1.16.5, you can do that as well. We'll be doing 1.16 in this video, by the way. You can see all the different stuff here. Now, it's really cool because it does have a grace period. It's already built in, alt support, anti-spam support, you know, upgrades, shop, like faction shops and different things, factions points, a quest system. F inspect, audit, all this stuff. I mean, even faction duels, that's really, really cool. All this stuff is built in. Um, there's also different, you know, expansions coming very, very soon as well. Something else I will say is this plugin is pretty up to date. It was updated yesterday uh, as I'm recording this video. So you can see 78 version updates. So very, very active, and that's what I like to see as well. So this is a factions plugin we're going to be using. All of these plugins can be downloaded by clicking this download button. I will not be going through it on every single one of them and showing you how to download it. It's just not necessary, but you will need to probably keep and save these plugins as you download them. Next up is Essentials X. And when you go to the Essentials X link in the tutorial or in the description down below, it's going to take you to our Essentials X tutorial here. And this is good because it's going to go in depth with this plugin. Like I said, we can't go in depth on every single plugin on this list because this video would be seven hours long. So we have dedicated videos for some of these plugins, Essentials X being one of them, and you can watch this tutorial here. But just to download it, you're going to click that download page. Essentials X is, well, an Essentials plugin. It's going to add in everything from being able to set home to being able to add in player warps to even being able to set your spawn point to being able to configure your chat. It kind of does a ton of stuff. Even kits are handled through Essentials X. So it's pretty important that you have this if you want a really cool server that's going to be able to have all the features a lot of players expect. After you've downloaded that, we can move on to Luck Perms. Luck Perms is your permissions plugin. You need a permissions plugin because how else are you going to dictate ranks? How else are you going to dictate what people can and can't do on the server? For example, I don't think you want people going around and being able to, like, you know, world edit on your server. Well, if you don't have a permissions plugin, it's possible that they could. But as soon as you install a permissions plugin, players can only do things that they are allowed to do set by you. So, for example, default players wouldn't be able to world edit, but you as the owner admin of a server, you could. Luckily, we do have an in-depth tutorial on Luck Perms here, and that is 100% needed to be watched to be able to set up a faction server. This right here is the backbone of your server, more so even than the factions plugin, because this plugin right here is, you know, what I guess adds the game in, but everything else is managed by luck perms, right? You can set permissions for all these different things. Like if you don't want someone to be able to use the F inspect tool, right? You're going to set that up with permissions so they can't do that. So that's why luck perms is so important. And again, you need to watch that in-depth tutorial. For the rest of these, you know, they're pretty self-explanatory, but Luck Perms is one where having an in-depth tutorial is going to help you so, so much. Better RTP is going to allow people to do slash RTP and randomly teleport around the world. Some faction servers don't like that, and if that's the case, you can skip it. But from what I've seen, a lot of most of the bigger faction servers today have it, so we're going to go ahead and install that. It allows you, again, to just randomly teleport to a random location on the map. 
auction house is, well, as you can tell, an auction plugin. So we're going to go ahead and download that so you can do, you know, sell things to other members and members can sell things to each other via the auction house. Featherboard, on the side of the screen on Minecraft servers, you've probably seen this right here. You see this like little kind of setup? That's what Featherboard is. If you want that, this is the plugin you're going to use for it. If you don't want that, well then you don't have to install this plugin. It's optional, but a lot of servers these days do have something like this, so it is important to go ahead and get it if you, you know, want it. So we can go ahead and download there. Shop GUI Plus is how you're going to be able to do slash shop in-game and actually be able to, you know, buy things and sell things to the shop and all that. Basically, it allows you to have an economy. As you can see, you're selling something there, and uh, they don't have a buy screenshot, but it's the same exact menu. But yeah, that's kind of that, so we can go ahead and download Shop GUI Plus here. And then we can also go ahead and download Vault. Vault is what's going to be used to be able to link Shop GUI Plus and Essentials and Auction House and all that stuff together, so that's why you need the Vault plugin. And then we have, after that, World Edit. So the World Edit plugin here is, well, Pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to build quicker, but it also allows you to use World Guard, which we're going to download here in a second, in order to protect your spawn. So we're going to go ahead and download the latest file of World Edit there. And then last but not least, we do have World Guard here, where if we go to the downloads, stable builds for bucket, and we'll be able to download here for 1.16 plus. So there you have it. That is all the plugins. World Guard is again going to allow you to protect your world as well as set different, you know, rules and things like that for your world. So you want to protect your spawn and you don't be able to be able to TNT there. That's fine. But then if you also want to set a war zone up outside of your spawn, you can do that all with World Guard. But yeah, so now we can go ahead and minimize. And here on our desktop, we have tons and tons and tons and tons of files. Now, Essentials specifically for this video, we're going to be using Essentials X, Chat, and Spawn. Those are the three we like to use pretty much all the time here on the channel. And that's it. However, you can look at the other ones like Protect if you think you'll need it. Go ahead and download it. Now I'm going to go ahead and install these on the server. I'm assuming you know how to do that, but it's just going to be dropping them into the Plugins folder here. As you can see, a lot of them are already in there from my testing. But we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop all of these right in here to the Plugins folder and fire up the server for the first time. No reason to overcomplicate it. It's pretty simple stuff. Installing plugins is the easy part. The hard part is about to happen whenever you get all of your plugin files, right? So as you can see, all these are here and very, very quickly, it's going to just generate a ton of folders for all of these plugins. And you're going to be like, that's a lot. That That's overwhelming. And it is. But if you attack each plugin individually one at a time, it suddenly becomes a lot easier to manage. And that's what I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend going through all these plugins and, you know, trying to do multiple plugin configurations at one time. It's not going to work well for you. But if you go through one at a time, it can work out pretty well. So as you can see there, we have factions, we have essentials, all of these here are there and set up. And now we go ahead and go back into plugins. We can get to configuring these. Now again, I'm not going to be going over every single one of these in depth, especially things like Essentials and Luck Perms where we already have dedicated tutorials and even Shop GUI Plus has a dedicated tutorial on our channel that you can check out down below. Those we're going to be skipping because we, you know, can't go over all of these individually. There's just so many of them. But Factions is why we're here, so I wanted to go ahead and look at this Factions folder to be able to kind of go ahead and go through everything that's here. So, some of this stuff is more of data storage. Aliases, for example, is going to be that. It's going to be more data storage than it is going to be anything else. It's basically just saying that Claim Auto is linked to this, so on and so forth. This is probably something you will never touch, and that's okay. However, if we go ahead and jump into Config, we can really start to see some of the different things that you can set up with this Factions plugin, some of the different things you can change, and some of the things you can truly make your own for your server. So. As you can see here, we have our documentation. And the good thing is it's a very, very well documented. And that's something you don't see quite often with a lot of plugins. But this one is very, very well documented. For example, you can set up hardcore here, all of that stuff. You can set up different hardcore warp settings. It's really, really cool. Faction fly, whether you want flight within factions, different you know settings with that. This is a super powerful factions plugin. And I'm not going to go through all of it. It is your job setting up a faction server to go through all of this and kind of look at all these different settings and see what you want to do. And they're very well documented. If they weren't well documented, I would go through some of them, but there's really no reason for me to. You can go through all this. Every single thing is a list here. You can even, by the way, customize what these commands like say, right? F create, like this is the factions help menu. You can customize what it is and you can remove stuff if you want. For example, if you didn't want those two commands to be shown, you can do that. That's something that no factions plugin really has, and this one makes it very, very easy to do, but it creates this crazy config. Now, down here, you might be like, what is this? Fperm GUI? What? So factions permissions is what this is talking about. And while it's not super well documented, once you understand that all of this stuff is just GUI settings and materials in the GUI, descriptions in the GUI, you start to get, okay. Slots is where is this thing, are all of this stuff located in the GUI? All of that stuff. Same thing, Fwarp GUI, factions broadcast. So this is going to be, you know, different broadcasts that, 
just into a player when they create a faction, they leave a faction, open a faction, or be, you know become the faction leader or the leader changes things like that. So all of this is there. It's all outlined. I'm not going to be going through it. Even F PayPal. You know, can people set their PayPal there? You can set all of that up. It's a lot, but it's all really well documented and something that you can go through. If you're setting up a server, this is what most of your time setting up a server is going to be. And um, if you're not prepared for that, maybe you shouldn't start a server. You know, I know that a lot. A lot of people don't like that, but it just kind of is the facts of it. Most of setting up a server is sitting in a config file, not sitting in Minecraft. So that's that. I also want to go ahead and mention the discord.yml here. This is going to be your different discord integration settings. Definitely worth looking at if you do want to use discord with this plugin. It's a unique feature that Saber Factions has and really, really cool. You've also got the language file. So you can change some of the language files in the config.yml. You can change even more here. So you might want to go in there and do that as well. And then last but not least, we do have the permissions.yml, which is something I wanted to check out. And this is going to be kind of all the different permissions and things like that that are in game and you can change these and move them and all that stuff. And again, you can ask on their Discord there if you do have any questions about the permissions. And then there is the shop.yml, and this is the faction shop, which would be different from slash shop in game. So you can see there is a purchased amount, time, item for all this stuff in the shop, and then you can define items down here in the shop. Most likely, I would recommend not using this unless you really want to. That's where Shop GUI Plus is going to come in, right here, right? That's where this is going to come in, and I would recommend using that. I feel like it feels more familiar to players, but I'm old school, I guess, in that way. Maybe you want to use your Factions plugin. So that's kind of the basis of Factions there. It's all really well documented, and that's what matters. Now, Featherboard here is something else that's really, really cool, and you can come in here to, mo oh, sorry, you can come in here to Config, and you'll be able to set up your Featherboard and kind of look at all that stuff. And um, yeah, that's kind of that. Like that is that is overall the basics of getting this set up on your server and getting factions up and running on your server. Featherboard actually didn't enable there because we forgot a compatibility plugin for it. And that's why that was uh, showing some issues there. And you actually come back here and you probably see that in the chat, that uh, Featherboard, yeah. So this is all Featherboard erroring out because it doesn't have its compatibility plugin, which is going to be this plugin right here, which we will link this in the description, but the MVDW placeholder API, it does need that. A little oversight on my or on my part there, I apologize for that, but we install that, and then we stop the server and restart it, and Featherboard will be installed, and you actually be able to change your Featherboards, but that's kind of the basis of it. I am gonna jump in game here, just for a second, and just kind of show you in game a little bit, but overall, again, most of your time is gonna be sitting in those config files. You now know the basis of setting up a faction server. You know, how do you set up a faction server? Well, you set up a Minecraft server and you install these plugins on it, and then you get the basis of a faction server. How much custom, you know, customization you wanna to do to that is kind of up to you, and we do have a guide on how to make a network Minecraft server in the description down below. Now, you might be like, I don't want a network server, I want a faction server, and that's true, but you'll notice that a lot of the things we teach in our network Minecraft server series is going to apply to your faction server and actually live in that playlist as well because a lot of people want to add faction servers to their network. So as you can see, Featherboard is doing a lot now that it is correctly integrated. And then once it is finished, I do want to show you the config files of that. So uh, actually, I'm going to do a jump cut until Minecraft is open, and then I will go ahead and show you that. So there we go, Minecraft is open. So now if we go ahead and go into plugins, we'll be able to go ahead and click on Featherboard. And now you have scoreboards and this is where you can actually you know change your scoreboard and stuff so if you open up the default.yml that's going to be the one that players have when they first join you'll be able to change that to something cool and be able to make it custom and make it your own so i'm actually just going to go in here and change this first line from dashes to hello world now you might be like why would you do that that doesn't make much sense but by doing that it's just showing you that um that it's going to be like that in game we're going to have to reload it once again there i accidentally went to breakdown craft the best minecraft server in the multiverse 1.16.5 green protected survival custom skyblock come play with us but anyway um didn't mean to join that let's go ahead and direct connect here to our local ip address we go ahead and join on in it's going to boom as you can see it's moving in the background over there all right let's get this all set up make it a little more better looking here so now i'm pretty sure if I go ahead and do slash FB reload, it might change this to say hello world. I also may have been in the wrong area to do that. Um, it's possible. So I think this is actually going to be the op one here because I am opt on the server. So let's see if I de op myself. Boom. There we go. Yeah. So hello world, as you can see there, because I was opt, I had a different one that showed like different you know information. But um, yeah, so there's kind of that. That is the basis of getting a faction server set up. We are online. We can check, you know, plugin compatibility, all of that stuff. Now, if you do want to do slash factions, you'll be able to see all the different stuff. So we do slash F create test and boom. There we go. You should now do F description. So we can do that. So F description. The F description, and then this is the description. That's weird. That's a that's a little plugin bug, I think. 
uh, where it turned red like that. So now you can see that. You can set your PayPal. So F set PayPal test at test.com. Boom. And then if you do, I think F PayPal, is it going to is it going to return that back to me? Yes. So it's going to turn that back return that back to me. All of that stuff. And I think is there is there a slash F G U I? How do you open up that? I believe there is one. I might be wrong here. But um, if not, you can create custom GUIs, by the way, with a plugin called uh, Featherboard, or not Featherboard, sorry, Deluxe Menus. And I'll link that in the description down below. But anyway, there's kind of all of the, uh, all of the, you know, you can do F list, all the different stuff that you can do with factions and, and getting it all set up. There's a lot of commands here, and that's by design, right? So, like, you have to learn everything from the ground up. And sure, I could go all the depth, you know, in depth and stuff and how to set up warps and everything, but like, I have to decide what point is server admin stuff and what point is just a little, you know, tutorial on how to use uh, or on, on, you know, how to play factions. And so as you can see here, that's kind of all the different commands we went through. F alts is interesting. So you can go in here and you can invite alts. You can, you know, list alts, kick alts, all that stuff. You can invite players to your faction, everything. It's a lot, but overall, that is the basis of setting up a faction server. You know, have the basic plugins set up, and you can go in and configure those plugins each individually and get everything set up and things like that. So, nevertheless, there you have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. The best and easiest way to set up a faction server is with Apex Minecraft hosting. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to die by that skeleton or that zombie. But anyway, uh, is with Apex Minecraft hosting. You can check out Apex. The first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex for your own incredible server, running factions and all that stuff. We are getting some errors, it looks like, in the um, the console here. Okay, so factions is throwing an error there. I'll go ahead and report that to uh, them. But nevertheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Hope you enjoy your faction server, and I'm out. Peace.